Hi everybody, I'm Mick, and uh, welcome to Russ's shop. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Russ is one of my dealers. I mean, uh, tool suppliers that I occasionally buy stuff from. And uh, uh, every time I come to a shop, I'm just uh, amazed at how organized and neat everything is. And I, I get that feedback from people who come to my shop that it's well organized, but he makes me look like a, a hoarder. So, um, so Russ has grace, graciously uh, agreed to give us a tour of his shop. Uh, but I thought first maybe we'd uh, get a little bit of background. So I, you, sure. you were a machinist. Right? I've been a machinist for 44 years. Okay. Pretty much my entire life. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, it's all I've ever done every day of my life was went to a machine shop to work. Yeah. Uh, I originally started out in a small job shop in 1980. Uh, I had a, worked there for four years and got a hell of an education. Uh, we had at the time we had CNC equipment, which is was it in the dark ages of CNC, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We had two Bridgeport mills and uh, a, a CNC lathe. I did all the programming for them. I did all. I ran them. Um, after that, I got a job in more of a maintenance type shop, doing more maintenance type work, and I worked there for 33 years. And every day I did something different, and I loved the trade. Uh, cool. I loved my job. I just loved what I did, and I was lucky enough to retire at 55. And after I retired, I missed it so much that at the time I had a classic car. I sold the car and started all this. Nice. And the rest is history. I, that was about seven years ago. I've been okay. Very cool. Busy. Yeah, yeah. So you do uh, jobs now. It's not just a hobby for you. It's, I, it's a business. I have a business. Yeah. Uh, I do. I do work for other machine shops. I do walk-in work. I do pretty much anything anybody brings me. I can do. Yeah. Cool. Uh, All yeah, right. So I'd, uh, I'd just like to show you around my shop and. Uh, yeah. Maybe you'll see some things you like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed because your shop is about the same size as mine. And we have pretty much the same tools, but you have all this extra room and space. And I, I don't get it. I, it's a 24 I, by 24 garage. Okay, yeah, <laughs> mine's 22 by 22. And, uh, but uh, there's no way I could fit a bridge port in mine. <laughs> 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 all right, we'll start uh, over here. Let's yeah. take a look and uh, yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, this is my uh, 30 ton Interpack hydraulic press. Um, it's uh, pneumatic hydraulic. I have a foot pedal so I can use both hands when I'm doing something. I, I really like this press because it has about a 16 inch stroke so I can push a broach through with one shot. I don't have to stop and reset up and move things around. Nice. Um, it, it works great. It's a, a great press. Cool. So the uh, the winch there on the side to raise and lower the table, was originally, that part of it? Originally these had a hydraulic cylinder. That you raise and lower with. This one was missing it, so I fastened this winch on here. Uh huh. So they can raise and lower the table with the winch, pull the pins out. Yeah. Raise and lower with that. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Just this. Yep. I also have this uh, press brake, my little press brake my son bought. You can put it in here and you can use it for bending little pieces of sheet metal or bars or whatever. Yeah. You can flip the. The V blocked for different size bends, and I put a couple. I cut this V and made a smaller bend, but these things work pretty good for, yeah. for small jobs. Nice. Over here, I have this is basically just the hardware. It's all Harbor Freight toolbox. It's basically just a hardware cabinet. I just have all okay. kinds of hardware. Yeah. Nuts, bolts. You know, the stuff that everybody has. Mm -hmm. um, like this kind of stainless steel. Here I have more nuts and bolts, small hardware. More stuff in there. Drill bit cabinet, fractional number letters, pretty much full of drills. This is just a... Yep. Everybody's got to have one of these. these yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I, I totally uh, am on board, though, with the closed cabinet yeah. Uh, yeah. thing. I used to have open shelves, and 
it seems like at least twice a year you got to go through and wipe everything down and clean it. And yeah, I go through it a couple times a year and throw stuff out. Try to throw stuff out. Over here, I have a uh, it's a Steel City bench grinder. In my opinion, this is probably the nicest bench grinder you can buy for this money. If anybody wants to know, you have to get them out of Canada. If anybody wants to know where to get one, get a hold of me or, or Nick, and uh, we'll let you know. This yeah. one, I uh, took the guards and wheels off, and I put, this is a CBN wheel, and this is a diamond wheel. Ooh. I made this fence system because on these wheels, you can... Uh, you can grind on the sides. Oh, yeah. You don't need guards because they're, they'll never fly apart. Yeah. I don't know if anybody has a CBN wheel, but they're life-changing. I can't recommend this wheel enough. Okay. I've been thinking about getting one. Uh, um, do you, what size is that? Is that an eight? It's an eight inch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are pretty hard to find in the eight. I've seen uh, a lot of sixes. This place here uh, is where I bought them from. It's called uh, Word, Word Turner's Wonders. Okay. If anybody wants the information right there, they have a deal if you buy two, they're not cheap, Yeah. but they're worth every penny. I, I can't believe, I can't recommend these wheels enough. Okay, um, very cool. Yeah, I've never heard of the uh, Steel City brand either, but man, it looks nice. This is a <clears throat> oh, wow. slow speed grinder. It's super smooth. I mean, just to, to sharpen a tool. Wow. You feel how sharp that is. That's, Holy cow. This is a 180 grit. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's really nice. Yeah, and the lights you were showing me earlier, that's yeah. one of them. Yeah, but I made it so you can turn it either way. Mm -hmm. You can use the sides. When you have limited space, you got to be creative with your space. <laughs> hey, yeah, tell me about it. But, uh, Very cool. So you said they're from Canada. This No, this grinder's from Canada. That's what I mean, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the grinder, okay. yeah. Very cool. The, these are... I can't recommend this grinder enough. You All can, right. I mean, you can see this thing will be spinning for another five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to look into that. I uh, I just have a uh, Craftsman, I think is, is what mine is, and it doesn't seem to be balanced very well. These, even with the original wheels, they come with a balancer with weights and everything. Oh, okay. So you can balance your own I've been thinking wheels. about getting one of those, um, but then I have to get new wheels because, you know, the Arbor's 5 eighths. You'd be and... far better off buying this grinder. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, All right. Yeah, Good I to know. This fence system to so just plain old 110, right? Nothing yeah. fancy. Okay. Not like those big bow doors or anything no, with no, three no. phase motors. I had a couple of those great big uh, Delta Rockwell tool grinders. I never used them. Hmm. This thing is so much handier than. Yeah. That. Cool. Three quarter horse. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like you're uh, some stock. Yeah, I got a little stock there, and I'm hell bent on not having like a huge steel rack. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah. Most most material I need, I buy as as I need it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that big of a thing. Okay. Air compressor. Yeah. Uh, glass bead cabinet. Okay, so you use glass beads in yours? Yeah, it's like a mixture. I'm not sure. I think it's a mixture of a couple different things. Okay. All I've ever used is garnet. So off to. Uh, I've been thinking about trying something else, but. Yeah, I have a. Uh, Reclaimer, it's in the back room. Oh, ah, boy, that's quiet. That's nice. I have to wear ear protection when I run mine. It's because it's in the back room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's still pretty quiet. Um, over here, I have a Boyer, Schult Boyer Schultz 612 surface grinder. Um, fine pole magnetic chuck. Very it's nice. A, it's a real nice grinder. I mean, um, I'm sure there's better, I'm sure there's worse, but this thing does everything I need it to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I made this stop. I can lock the table in place because I have a couple of centerless, gr centerless grinders. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, other attachments for it. Um, I made a couple of these. Somebody on YouTube was making these. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think... Uh... I made a couple of them. They used set screws to balance it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my buddy Spencer Webb uh, oh. might might be him because he. Who it was. Uh, I tried. He was selling them. I tried to buy him, and he wasn't selling them anymore. So oh, I okay. All right. Well, then it probably wasn't Spencer because uh, Spencer has them on his website. He's the guy who does the uh, precision ground flat stones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he makes a lot of parts for uh, surface grinders as well. I need this too. This is something. Somebody. I got this idea on YouTube too. It's a yeah propeller, airplane propeller. 
balancer. balancer. Yeah. But it works really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think James Clough demonstrated using one of yeah. these one time. Yeah. Uh, it works really good. Nice. I'll have to keep an eye out for one of those too, because uh, boy, those regular uh, uh, balancers pricey. are expensive. They're pretty pricey. Yeah. yeah. I have this. Uh, This is a grinder. You would mount it like this. Mm -hmm. Put your piece in there, and mm -hmm. then you could grind. Okay. Yep. Between centers. Between centers. Yep. Got a little motor. Mm -hmm. What brand is that? I don't, the guy I bought it from said it was shop made. Oh. But I'll tell you, whoever made this. Yeah, they did a hell did, of a job. Did, did a hell. I mean, feel this. How smooth this is. That. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, that's uh, extremely yeah. nice. Whoever made this did a heck of a job. This thing's all ground. This yeah. is all all ground. Wow. I mean, it works great. These are carbide centers. Hmm. Yeah, one of these days I'll get my, uh, my surface grinder finished. But, uh, I should have known when I tore it apart to uh, <laughs> to do everything that I wasn't going to get it done in the year like I thought. Yeah. I think I'm on year three now. <laughs> but I have some other accessories. I made this uh, puller to pull the wheel off. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Uh, off. Cool. Uh, I have a set of these. These are pretty neat. I get a ton of money for these babies. These are for, uh, like, if you wanted to grind uh, flat stones or something. Oh, something okay, okay. Grind, yeah, yeah. It pulls them down. and it Right, yeah, and up. then it's got, the, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I don't think I've seen those before, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a great idea. Some wheel dressers. This is something. I love buying tools that people made. Mm. I feel that. Somebody made that thing. It's like. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You would put that on the chunk and then move mm -hmm. this back and forth under the wheel. Nice. But I have a selection of wheels. And, yep. uh, Does this take the um, regular standard size hub? Yeah. Um, this is a hub right here. This oh, okay. Is the hubs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, if you... Uh, if you'd like, I I actually picked up a dozen of those. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, though I think I, I got them off of I think uh, either Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for like forty bucks for like a dozen of them. So maybe I maybe I could maybe I could, maybe I could <laughs> maybe I could spare you a few so you can keep some more wheels uh, yeah. on the hubs. And yeah, I want to get a CBN wheel for this. Mm. Um, I want to get a thin one for doing grinding. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a guy recently used a uh, one of those Scotch Brite wheels on it. Oh, really? Yeah, it actually came out. Did a pretty interesting finish. One more thing about the CBN wheels, they're only for hardened steels, like tool steel. Yeah, they're, they're not for sharpening lawnmower blades and general grinding. They're lifetime guaranteed. Yeah, um, but yeah. they're only for high speed steels and that, you know, anything, yeah, anything that's a little bit hardened. Cool. But yeah. Um, over here, this is probably one of my newer purchases. I bought this from, uh, I think it was sawblade.com. It's just a little chop saw, chop yeah. saw yeah. band saw. Mm -hmm. I bought this one because it had the cast aluminum table. Almost every one is stamp steel. I thought it was a little bit higher quality. Um, it works really good. I, I can't believe how good this saw works. I, I can't attest to its durability yet, but I'll show you over here. Last night I cut these. I cut 40 of these on there. And okay. Yep. Yeah, you know, I think uh, with no these... No cool it needed. The thing works beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from, from what I've found and from what I've heard, I mean, the biggest difference seems to be the the blade. Yeah. Right? You know, you just use good quality blades. And... Well, when I bought the saw, I bought uh, 13 blades. I had a sale on them, too. Okay. Nice. There's plenty of blades. This is only the second blade I've even used in it, and I've had it for months. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Lot. So what we should do is um, any of these tools that you're recommending, I'll get uh, you know names from you, and I'll put just put them in the uh, description. Yep. This yeah. This is a uh, 
port a band on a swag table. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love mine. This yeah. thing is a great saw. I, I can't believe how good this saw works, honestly. Like, it cuts so good. A lot, like Nick said, a lot of it's the blade. Yeah. Um, but I got these blades from sawblade.com too. Okay. And uh, it just works really, really well. Yeah. Um, if anybody, I know they're hard to get now, but, but these uh, Porter Cable band saws with the motor down here gives uh -huh. you a more clearance in here uh -huh. than the other saws. Like the, the walkie saws will only give you, when they put the motor here, you only get about a half an inch of clearance here. Yeah, so this, I was. Uh, this gives you two and a quarter inches between the blade and. The yeah, blade. I was noticing you had a, a lot of clearance there, and I was I was wasn't picking up why. Yeah, I. Yeah, I have the uh, I have the same table, but I have the El Cheapo Harbor Freight Bauer saw. Yeah, when I bought this table, I bought it for Milwaukee because I have a Milwaukee, and I had this saw at the same time, and then when I put that Milwaukee in there, I'm like, God, I can only cut something like it's a half an inch deep. So. Uh, I bought this insert and I modified it to fit this, this saw. Uh, mm -hmm. But these things are really handy. Yep. Every shop should have one of these. I don't care how many band saws you have. <laughs> yeah. To just walk over here and cut something. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. Made, I made this for uh, pushing stuff through the, keep your fingers away from the uh, blade. Oh, that's <laughs> a nice idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I made a, uh, uh, used some heavy aluminum angle and made it, uh, a fence with two tracks uh, so I can push stuff through but yeah that's a good idea too. You, uh, can, you can steer stuff with, with mm -hmm. uh, I call it a Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. And, uh, and then the belt yeah, grinder. The belt sander. Yeah. The bell door uh, works really good. I use it all the time. Yeah. What size belt is that? It's a 2x48. 2x48, okay. Yeah, I've been thinking, I, I keep, I like those 2x72s, but man, sure they're expensive. <laughs> they're expensive. Yeah, the grinder's got to be expensive. And, uh, I just bought this used. Uh, it works really good. You know, uh, sure, I'd love to have a Burr King for about $3,000, but <laughs> this thing, this for, for now, that foots the bill. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but I have these lights on everything. I love these lights. They're... Uh, there's a supplier near me that has them for $51. That is the nicest light you're going to buy for $51. <laughs> cool. Down here we have uh, some end mills, bigger end mills. I have uh, uh, mandrels, tapered mandrels, I have expanding mandrels. Laps. I have some laps, whole laps. Yep, as I said, well organized. Whole saws, extra belts, your protection. Mm -hmm. kind of yep. Yeah, same philosophy too. Keep everything that belongs with the tools yeah, near the tools. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to be organized. If you're not organized, you can't work. Like, right. I try to make. If, you, if you're trying to make some money, you'll never make money looking all day for a drill bit or something. So yep. Whatever you need, you have to put your hand right on it and pick it up. Uh, this is the back side of the bridge port. It's got a slotting head attachment. Very, very rarely use it. I, yeah. But it came with it, so. Yeah, well. Yep. It's still there. Yeah, it's one of those things, though, when it comes in handy, it does. Yeah, making square holes. See, that's, now that's probably one, that's one tool that I have cl uh, cluttering up my shop is my shaper. So you've got this in place of it, so you can do the same things, yeah. you know, keyways, whatever. But yeah, okay. Over here I have a hydraulic cart. Another thing that's extremely handy. I can't recommend one of these high enough for a shop. I use it for a little work platform. I'll put it next to the lathe so I can put stuff there. I use it to lift up, uh, you'll see later, like heavy chucks. I can, I can carry the... Uh, Indexing heads, rotary tables over to the mill machine, crank it up, and uh, it's hydraulic, it lifts right up and goes down. Cool. This, I should have had one of these years ago. <laughs> that thing is so handy. This here, I have a, uh, a lapping plate in there. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. 
Well, that'll be something we'll have to talk about. I haven't gotten into that yet, but I did pick up a set of three lapping plates and All the small ones, some yeah. of the compound. Yeah. Yeah. So. This is just full of hardware. And This is a, a fixture I made for, uh, I made some throttle shafts for a Hillboard fuel injection unit. Um, I have one over there I'll show you, but I had slots and I had to go with a slitting saw from both sides. Hmm. And I had four of them, it was four throttle bodies all racked together. So I could do off, you had to make the whole shaft on one side of it, you couldn't take it out. Because you had to go in from this side and then come in from this side to make the slot. And you had to do it four times. And then. You had to drill the holes for the butterflies, so it was, I made this, you could move the clamps around, back mm. and forth. Nice. And, uh, I probably had way more time in making the fixture than I did in making the throttle shaft. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully you got the opportunity to make more than I uh, did. I made a couple and sold them on eBay, and then I got a job from another guy making single ones. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things, though, you know, one. that... Uh, 20 years down the road, somebody's going to look at it and go, what the heck is yes. this? <laughs> I've got a few of those kinds of things lying around. That I'm this was to... a uh, Harbor Freight uh, mm -hmm. tool cart. It was just the top section. Oh, okay. And I was at a flea market, and I found the same exact one. The guy sold for 30 bucks. So I bought it, and I mounted the top section down here. Because that was nothing but a junk collector down there, yeah. that bottom tray. And uh, So then I had the bottom tray left and some other parts, so I made this. Ah, very clever. This is the bottom tray that was the top. <laughs> I just keep like larger stock and stuff in there. Yeah. Put some wheels on it. That's a great idea. Yeah, because that's that's a, one of the few places I still have some space left is underneath <laughs> the workbenches and stuff. Yeah, here I have a uh, Arbor Press. It's on Arbor Press. Uh, doubles as a grinder stand. Mm hmm. I need to say you can just take the grinder off. Oh, cool. If you need to use it for a arbor press. But I had I had this on the stand and one day I said, why do I have that? I hardly ever use the arbor press. Yeah. I can use that for the stand. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I keep thinking about that. I've got a smaller one ton and I've never used it. Never. It's nice for pressing in bearings when you want to feel, get a feel that they're going in. Yeah. Well, that's why I keep it because I'm sure one day yeah. it's going to come in handy. Yeah, I have to keep the up there. Yeah. Here I have a little oven. I've dabbled in doing some heat treating and stuff. Nice. nice. This is a box. I had to go to an oral surgeon one time for some dental work and I told him I was a machinist and he says, I got a box downstairs you might be interested in. And he gave wow. Me this. <laughs> That's cool. I can't even get the pics from my dentist. <laughs> I ended up getting some work from him. So he raced BMWs and he had some wheels I had ended up boring the wheels out and oh. some other stuff. So but this was my welding bench. Do kind of some welding here. Mm -hmm. you know, some supplies, gloves, <coughs> cut off wheels, grinding wheels, scotch board. This is more welding stuff, big welder tips, wire brushes. Some grinders. So you do MIG, you do TIG, and yeah, I have a MIG. This is like this is fairly new. I just bought this not long ago. This is a MIG, two twenty MIG, and I have a uh, ACDC TIG. Nice down there. I'm not the world's greatest. I, I can weld MIG really good, but I'm not the world's greatest TIG welder. That's a whole art I, form in itself. I'm learning. I'm getting better, but uh, yeah, I don't well, practice enough because I don't. I don't do welding. That's not what I like to do. So yeah. If it's part of a job, I'll do it, but I don't take in welding jobs. And yeah. Kind of yeah. Stuff. I just bought a new welder and it's uh, it's one of those multi-process. Yeah. And so it, the, it was cheap enough to add the TIG torch onto it. So right. I went ahead and did it. Figure, and I, ha I already had a tank of argon gas. Is it DC or AC? Or it's, it's only DC. DC. Yeah. So, exactly. so I can't do aluminum. Uh, but I figure at least maybe I can start learning. When I bought um, this, I'm looking at the multi-process because they weren't much more. Mm -hmm. But I already had this. Yeah. So I said, oh, I don't really need it, and I'm going to get a, probably going to get a better MIG welder mm. than if I bought the multi-process. Yeah, alarm. yeah. So this is really nice. It's all digital. Uh, you know, it's got the auto set and everything. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. These are a couple jobs that are in process of working on. Um, over here at my bridge port, you know, typical uh, uh, variable speed. Uh, I've got an old uh, Pathfinder Teledyne Girly D, uh, DRO, but it works really good. It goes out to half a thousandth. I thought about updating it, but. I've never had a, a bit of problem with it. And mm -hmm. so, so what kind of scales does it have? It's got a, I'm not sure what they are. They're uh, what are they, glass scales. Glass, okay, yep. Yeah, they're, uh, I actually like them, like a lot of them today mount on the back. And I actually like this one on the front because I mount stuff on the back. If oh. I'm doing a job, I, I drilled in Taft holes back here, and I can mount something long here. Oh, and okay. I can swing the head over. I do that quite often. Yeah. So I really like having the option of this back surface mm -hmm. to mount stuff. I guess you could probably do the same on the front. But, uh, plus, cool. I don't lose any travel going back. Yeah. Yeah, I had a uh, an old school DRO on my lathe that I ended up replacing. Um, uh, but the main reason was the scales yeah. were uh, basically rack and pinion gears and oh. they, it was just getting chips built up in there and stuff and yeah. so yeah. yeah this so. is accurate to a minute half a thousand. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if I was going to place I'd use magnetic scales for sure today like my lathe has. But, uh, nice. Yeah, nice curt release. Uh, yeah. Keep so is this my, keep all my regular used collets right here? Mm -hmm. So is this three phase? Or? Three phase. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do? You use I have a, a rotary phase converter. Oh, okay. Um, I can show you that later if you want. Um, yeah, I have all my most used collets here, and I, have, I just made this collet rack not long ago, so I keep. I have them all by thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep yeah. my most used parallels right here. Nice. I yeah, I think that was one of the last things I bought from you was some, uh, you had some extra 30-second uh, yeah. RA collets. And... Yeah, it took me a while to uh, uh, amass all these because they're all Lindex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't give them away. Um, these are all... Yep, drill and tap sets. Like I said, I like to have everything. If i got a drill and tap a quarter 20 hole, I'm right here. I, just, I don't have to go searching, looking around. Yeah. Um, I keep a lot of my mill accessories right here. I have a set of those Quadrillo. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have this. My son made me this a while ago. I never ground it, but I usually don't ground it. it mounts in the vise. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I drill and tap, drilled and tapped as bolts. So you can put 1032 screws in there. Oh, bolts right to that. Cool. Um, he cut this out on a wire EDM where he used to work. Very nice. I don't know if you're familiar with those, I'll show you something. What's that? This is the female port. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the wire EDM machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm familiar with them from the, yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's really cool <laughs> to always see those. Uh, and he did this, it was twice this thick. He did two at once. Mm. Yeah, one of my other... Uh, tool suppliers down in uh, Kingston area. He was a machinist for IBM and he's got a couple wire IDM, EDMs in his shop. But I keep like stuff that I use all the time in here. These uh, right light clamps I use all the time. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for, for raising the, the lower in the knee. Yep, yep. With I was going to buy them on eBay. I said, ah, I'll make them. I'm a little too busy to time. So I made this one and I made this one. This was my practice one. It came out perfect. This was my. This one was stainless. <laughs> kept them both. Um, cool. Uh, we'll head over this way. I guess. All right. Um, this is a uh, Gerstner toolbox. I bought this for my son when he graduated from uh, college, when he went for machining, and I was at a swap meet. A year or so later, and I got a really, I bought a really nice Kirschner, the wider one. And when I brought that home, he says, I want that one. <laughs> so he gave me this one, I gave him that one, and he still has it. Um, 
I don't have this in here. I have mostly just uh, taps and dies. Tap and die handles. Some more taps and dies. Yeah. This is kind of a metric. This has these things on. I'm not sure I like that. This is uh, pulley taps, uh -huh. long ones. These are, uh, this is my drawer of special taps, like special threads, left hand threads, oddball stuff. More taps and dies, all small stuff right down to uh, zero taps. This is a set of uh, cutters for the the uh, shaping head on there. Oh, uh huh. These are these are the actual Bridgeport cutters for that. Cool. Uh, my son made made me this in school. Speed handle. Yeah. He made yeah. It. That's the name of my business he engraved in there. This I, this idea I got from, uh, what's his name on, e, on uh, YouTube? Tubal Kane. Oh yeah, uh -huh. uh, yep, Mr. Pete. Mr. Pete, he made one of these. So I, I liked it and I kind of made it an impro improved okay. version of it. Tramming head? Yeah, you can, but you can put this in here and tram it while the voice is on. Yeah. So if you have a job in there and you just want to double check. I use it all the time. I use it. Because I like because it swings so far too. Yeah. And it's just easy to put in. And, and you can put it over here and you can turn it to read it. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to have a mirror. Yeah, you don't yeah have or mirror. putting your head around. Yeah. Nice. So I made that. This is just a project he made in school. It's some type of I don't know what it is. You blow air in it and it does that kind of stuff. This is a Jimmy Die Rustin knife. Oh yeah. I'm sure everybody knows him. Oh yeah. These are uh, gauge gauge pens. Yep, gauge pen. Yep. Yeah, when I first started this uh, this hobby of mine, I uh, I thought you know all these things I'm going to need, so I went out and bought all this stuff and. I, I think maybe I've used one gauge pen so far once. These uh, go down to 11,000. I but, use uh, these quite a bit, actually. <laughs> well, I, I think for me, it's I got to get, uh, I'm slowly but surely getting to the point where I'm doing more precise work. Yeah. And that's the key, I think, is, you know, I got to I gotta stop using the, uh, the calipers and start using mics. A lot of the work and, I do, like a lot of holes and stuff are like half thousandth tolerances, and this is the only way you can measure. Yeah. That closing quickly. Um, yeah, I got some surface gauges here, uh, Mitchell Toyo height gauge, just a Mitchell Toyo. This is a uh, setting gauge for uh, bore gauges, set and dial bore gauges. Hmm. You put your uh, this is a gauge block. You put your gauge block stack in there. Mm -hmm. And then you would put this in here. And then you would put your your bore gauge, gauge there. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a that looks way. yeah kind of similar to um, what do they call those? The Cadillac height gauges. Um, I think uh, Mr. Toy. Uh, yeah, they've got all these like built-in gauge oh, blocks, okay. and um, I saw one uh, a couple weeks ago at the. Uh, uh, Cabin Fever Expo, and I'm like, I've, I've got to figure out how to how those things work. Um, I'm sure there's there's probably a use, a resource like YouTube or something that could show me how to use those. But this is something I just made a couple days ago. It's some kind of locking collar for some. Most of what I do, I have no idea what it is. So, mm, you uh, just get specs and yeah, drawings. Just, and yeah. And, uh, this is 303 stainless. This is one of my favorite materials in the world to work with. Really? I stuff machines like butter. Oh, okay. Uh, it's really nice. I mean, this is the finishes you get yeah. right off the machine. Hmm. <laughs> so it doesn't work harden? No. Okay. Uh, if it does, I've never had it happen. And I was taking, in here, I was taking quarter inch cuts. Per okay. Side. All right. Yeah, that's the big thing I've heard about stainless steel. I've worked with oh, it yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, 304s, they'll, they'll work harden like that. I hate working with like that kind of stuff. Okay. But this 303, 
I don't know, they put sulfur or something in it to make it more machinable. Oh, yeah. It is yeah. a beauty to work with. All right. Okay, yeah, here I just have a small uh, granite surface plate. Thinking about getting something a little bit bigger, but for now, that's what it is. I have another Gerstner toolbox here I bought from a, a local guy. It was his father's. I completely refinished it. This is all the original hardware. I put all new felt in it. Mm -hmm. A really nice. Yeah. You can tell it's got the real nice grain. And in here I have uh, this is like my go to indicators. Uh, got a Noga one here. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I've got one of those. I like that. Uh, this is the one that clamps on the spindle. Onto the spindle, yep. Yep, is that an ed edge? It's an edge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the indicals are crazy money. Yeah. And uh, this was just as good. Yep. Yeah, I'm a People fan of... People are complaining of... about having an Allen head, but I bought this knurled screw off of McMaster one time. <laughs> but it works good. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, I just got all kinds of indicator adapters. And yep. I got one of those uh, oh, yeah. indicator point sets. Yep. There. This is my like go-to indicator drawer. This is one of those internal ones for on the lathe for mm -hmm. doing a bore. Yep. Dividers, inside outside calipers. These are just some angle, angle blocks. blocks. Most yep. of them I made. Some one two three blocks, sign bar. Here's some miscellaneous stuff. These I made for uh, grinding chuck jaws on a three jaw chuck. I put take the inside bolt out, put this in there, mm. on each inside one. And then you can put a piece of, I put this bearing race in there. Clamped onto that, and then you can. Okay, that way they're under load. They're under load. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I haven't worked up the guts to do that yet. <laughs> this is a uh, set of small brooches. Oh, yeah. Wow, I've never seen one that small. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 116, 330 seconds. Mm hmm. Yeah, I had a job I'll show you later. I needed them. A uh, set of boring bars. This is pretty neat. This is a uh, brown and sharp. I guess you call it a... It's not a cylinder square, yeah, but it's, it's the like, same idea. Yeah, it's like the opposite of a cylinder yeah, square. Basically. Yeah. Okay, so you use those surfaces. You use these surfaces. Right? Okay. That's pretty cool. I've never seen one of those. Yeah. yeah it's a brown and sharp 559. Hmm. I have used it. Uh, this is a... Uh, Kurt parallel spreader. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Keep them from falling over. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is something everybody should have right here. Engineer's black book. As a matter of fact, I was just browsing mine before I came over here. Uh, I uh, forgot who I, I was watching somebody the other day, and they were showing something that was in there. I thought, you know what? I didn't even know that was in there. I, I used to just all get the it time. out. And, uh, yeah. Machinist hand. It's like a condensed machinist handbook. Exactly. All the stuff you're really going to use is in here. Yep. And it's explained much better, or much easier. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I have the uh, the the drill size for tapping bookmarked on it on mine. Yeah, I probably should mark some stuff too. But I just saw something I would use all the time. Yeah. Yep. Highly recommended. Woodruff key card you know, dimensions, how deep to go. I mean, they use this all the time. Nice. Everybody should have one. Um, yep, totally agree. This is my uh, <laughs> fixturing and uh, an extra voice angle plate. This is a uh, Hartford super spacer, I guess they call it. I think it's got a 24 hole plate so any degree divisible by 24. Nice. I use this a lot. This thing's really nice. Extremely accurate. Um, this is just like the utility truck I use. A set of uh, expanding reamers. 
I bought these at a flea market one time. The guy says, I don't even know what they are. Will you give me 20 bucks for them? <laughs> yep. <I'm> sure. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Tap and die sets, uh, parts for the indexing head, more uh, brooches. brooches. I do quite yep. a bit of broaching, a lot of stuff. Lot of okay. Stuff. Um, this is some custom broaching stuff I've made. Uh, I had a job on time, I'll, I'll show it to you over there. It was a gear with a, a tapered hole that needed a keyway. Uh huh. So I made this to hold the gear at an angle, and then I made this. The fit, actually, this was the gear blank. This was one of the gear blanks. So this went like this, and then this went in the hole. So it was a straight shot. Cool. So it ended up with a keyway and a taper hole. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it takes you uh, hours to make just the fixture and to do, push a key to, you know, make, to make something. You yep. Know? Yeah. Well, you know, if you want the part to turn out right, you got to do it right. This is a, uh, I have a couple of these. This is one of those, uh, they were sold by Enco, made in France. I don't know, but it's one of those boring heads that will face to. Yeah. You can, while it's spinning, you can hold on to this and count the clicks. Yeah, oh, okay. It moves out two thousandths each time. Okay. So if you want to do an internal snap ring groove or something, you want to, and it has to be 50 thousandths deep, you would just count this 25 clicks. Ah, uh, okay. Um, or if you were boring something and then you wanted to face the top, yeah. you would just hold on to this and it would it would face out. Okay. Yeah, I have a uh, little smaller Criterion that has that, uh, but it's just got stops. It doesn't click. Yeah. Uh, but that looks like a nice one. Yeah, these were really nice. These were made in France. Hmm. I have a smaller one than this too. I use it quite a bit. I've done some motorcycle cases for a guy boring them out and usually I'll finish the top off while it's all, all in one setup. Mm -hmm. This is something else I use a lot. I bought recently. It's just a fixture plate. Uh huh. Yeah. Half inch tapped holes. Yep. But I can put this, I can put this right in my vise. So if I'm in the middle of a job and I want to, cl I want to clamp something down, just throw this in the vise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that'll fit between the vice jaws? Yeah. Okay. It's an 8-inch vice. Okay. This is like 7 or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a smaller fixture plate, but mine still won't fit, so I had to make a, a bar that clamps uh, underneath. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like the fixture plates. I use this quite a bit. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a lot handier than I, than I thought it was going to be when I bought it. But uh, I had a uh, big, heavy... Sign, Tilting, yeah. sign plate there, mm -hmm. um, some voice jaws. Yeah. These are some uh, voice jaws I made for uh, holding pistons. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I this. think we talked about this one of the last times yeah. I was here because you were, uh, they, they you go, were doing go, some rings or something? Uh, uh, cutting ring grooves. Yeah. Well, mostly I've cut, uh, I've done a lot of uh, valve relief. The valve pockets and the tops. Oh, okay. So I'll set these up and I have the chuck over there. Yeah. But I'll mount the whole chuck right on this sign plate and I get the right angle and then ah. it's just a matter of putting them in. Okay. But yeah, because I think you were telling me that uh, the pistons aren't truly round. The only thing round on a piston is the bottom of the ring grooves. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. Pistons are the hardest thing in the world to hold on to. Because huh. they're because of the heat, right? They, when they're, they expand? Well, yeah, because they're not round. Yeah. Nothing's round on them. And plus, they're delicate. I and mean, you know, a lot of the pistons I work on are very expensive. Hmm. And uh, I made these... Uh, I made extra ones of these. This is what goes in the ring groove. Oh, for different sizes. For piston. different sizes. I put the whole chunk in the lathe and I turn this to get the diameter. Nice. And, uh, That's about it. Like I said, I got that Kurt Vice. I have a set of those, uh, you probably can't see them in there, I'll get them out there. Those Vice jaws you mount right to the table. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, make, two, a, you can yep. make a voice three feet long. Yeah, yeah. What do they call those? Two piece. Yeah. Vice? I, I forgot what they. I've never them, used yeah. them. I thought I would, but I've never used them. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have one. I've thought about making one, but I don't know. We'll see. I have the, another Kurt Vice that has the the swivel base. Swivel base. Yep. I was gonna sell it, but I said, yeah. That's where that cart comes in handy. <laughs> pull that right over here and slide it out and take it out. Uh, we can go through these. Th these are mostly mechanics tools, but uh, I have quite a collection. All kinds of stuff. Cool. T handle latches, files, <laughs> stones, wires. Punches, chisels, all kinds of stuff. These things are pretty neat here. I don't know if you ever saw these. Uh, oh, spring punches. Yeah, yeah, I did see those uh, not too long ago. I was thinking about picking some up. You like those? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I only have one I use. I keep it in there, but I hardly ever use them. Okay. I got some pin punches. This is a set of spirit pin punches. Oh, uh-huh. Yep. Miscellaneous. Oh, this is all like specialty automotive type yep. tools that I've used. Um, over here I have a uh, yeah, all the sockets, of, uh, sockets, yep. ratchets, yep. ratchets, extensions. Drivers, or T handle wrenches, uh, electronic type screwdrivers, snap ring pliers, metric, yep. American. Very nice. Pliers. Let me remind everybody this is about 35 years of. Collecting tools. This didn't yeah. come overnight. All this stuff. Yeah. Well, it's uh, very soothing to my OCD. So. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at some of the, I don't see a Snap-on dealer every day, every week like I used to. And looking on YouTube with some Snap-on YouTube videos, I can't believe the price of Snap-on tools today. I oh. thought they were expensive back then, but uh, I sold almost all my pneumatic stuff. Okay. And just never used it anymore. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. kept uh, two impact wrenches and. Yeah, the electric stuff is just so readily yeah, available now. Yeah. And, and, and good. Yeah. Pullers, all kinds of special yep. puller adapters. And yep. Torque wrenches, yep. an electronic torque wrench, meters. This is just some miscellaneous. Yep. Bearing polar bearing areas, separators. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Uh, uh, you can see I got lots of knickknacks and stuff around here, I guess. To, um, this, I've had this toolbox since I graduated from high school. My mother and father bought it for me. Huh. Kennedy? Yeah. Yep. And uh, I've used this every day of my life <laughs> since then. Cool. Yeah, I and mean, I could have upgraded to a Gershner, but I just the nostalgia of it. Hey, you know, I, uh, I, I I've never owned one, but I, I do like the Kennedys. Yeah, it's got some squares in there, the sheet of squares, uh, some miscellaneous stuff, feeler gauges. These are all. Uh, Gear pitch gauges, Acme thread gauges, pitch gauges, all kinds of. These are those for taking chucks off the table. Uh huh. Yep. Jacobs top tens. But, uh, Radius gauges. Radius set. This is a flat blade depth mic. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Had that forever. Telescoping gauges, pole gauges, 
adjustable parallels. This is a uh, finish comparator. Uh huh. Yep. Some thread measuring wires, wiggler sets. Uh, oh, this for anybody that knows about old CNC. Oh, <laughs> this was the punch one of the punch tapes. I was going to yeah. ask you when you said you started back, you know, when yeah. I was going to ask if it was paper tape. Yep. You had to be at that time you had to be more of a mathematician than a machinist. Yeah. Cuz you had to plot every single movement of the tool. Um, there was no what they have today. But you would type all that in in this I don't even remember, teletype or typewriter type machine mm -hmm. and then it would punch out this tape. Yep. And then you would feed it into the tape reader of the CNC. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that was probably even before the days of G-code and yeah. all that. Yeah, I used to write all the programs. I can still remember the first line was G-O, G-90, X-O, Y-O, T-1, M-6. Oh, okay. So, so it was G-code yeah, then. So yeah, that okay. The first, that was the first line of every program. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if people remember that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never did it with machines, but I did it when I was first learning to program. Uh, Stuff was on paper tape. This is a tool I've had forever, too. I think my mother and father bought me this. I've oh, uh, last word? Probably for 40 years. I still have the original receipt for it. Came from uh, Saver Spock in Albany, New York. $88.54. Wow. That was expensive back then. 1981. Yeah. Of course, you know, 1981 still seems like it was only 20 years ago. So. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, was it? <laughs> yeah, and then I have them here for more parallels. Some jacks. And yep. I keep these nuts when I'm threading. <laughs> so I'm uh, okay. hunting for a nut. Yep. I don't know if anybody here knows what this is. This is a tapping block I made for starting tap straight. Okay. Just something simple to hold on and then mm -hmm. use it all the time. Uh, this is just some miscellaneous taps and dies and centers. One of those spring loaded. Mm -hmm. Tap follower. Yeah. Nice. And here I have uh, more measuring stuff. My eyesight went bad enough, I had to get these digital mics. They mm -hmm. make it so much easier, plus they're way more accurate. Yeah, you know, I, I like my digital mics. I still have a bunch of analog, but, uh, you know, you can't beat them. I and mean, you can yeah. switch back and forth between metric and fractional or the whatever. The thing I don't like is when the battery goes dead right in the middle of using one. Yes, <laughs> that yeah. That works me, but... Yeah, and you know it's it's uh, it, it, the the better ones seem the batteries seem to last longer. Yeah, I have a Mitsutoyu uh, digital caliper, and I'll forget and leave it on for days, yeah. and the battery's still good. Yeah, well, the different. cheaper ones, I go to my drawer, I haven't used it in a month, and the battery's dead. Yeah, same one. Yeah, yeah I have the same one. Yeah, it's an eight inch. I hardly ever use these. I much more prefer the dials. I don't know, I'm just more old school. Well, yeah. Um, for me, if I'm measuring something, and if I measure this and I got to go to uh, 650, I don't have to do the math. I can just go up right there, 75. Mm. So it's like I don't have to do any math in my head. I can. Yeah. It's just so much e quicker and easier for me. Yeah. I have a set of dial uh, calipers as well that I just started using more. I, I, um. I prefer them way over these. I know everybody uses these today, but I don't use them much. This is a uh, protractor. Oh, protractor. Mm-hmm. Yep, the uh, hardness testers. Hardness files. Yep. This is another. Uh, I use these more than these. That's a set of four inch. Oh, okay. Dials. Just for getting like in tight places. Yeah. A lot of times I'm in the mill and they don't have enough room for the. Exactly. Yeah. Ones. You know what? I'm gonna have to pick a set of those up because I. Yeah. The. And originally uh, I was gonna cut this off. Hmm. Because I didn't really want it in the way, but it's round. And it fits down in really small holes. Uh -huh. So if, if you're making, you know, you want to make a depth measurement. Yep. It does come in handy. So that's the Mitsutoyu, what size? Same thing, four inch. Four inch, yeah. okay. I think I'm going to have to pick one of those up because uh, I frequently find when I'm checking dimensions on the mill, yeah. I don't have room for the caliper to stand I mean, up in the there. the same way, so I these. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, I knew it. Every time I come over here, I got to buy something else. <laughs> I'm not buying it from you this time, but I'm buying something else. And here's uh, just some scales of the slant line. I, I've had that for 40 years, probably. This is a set of. Uh, Oh yeah, nice big inch, dial caliper. Yeah. Of toil. Mm -hmm. Vernier caliper down there. Yep. Uh, it's a 24 inch vernier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to keep everything that I use a lot right here, like right next to the lathe. Mm -hmm. Drill bits. Like I said, I have. I can lay my hand on pretty much any tool I need at any time. I don't yep. go searching, hunting for anything. Yep. I make sure these are all put back every day. They're all full. They're all there. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. And you can probably tell somebody else, go to this cabinet, the yeah. third drawer down, look on the right-hand side. and. Yep. Yep. In mills. In mills. Yeah. I tell my friend I go to the swap meets with him. I said, if I go to pick up another rim, I'll chop my fingers off. <laughs> I don't need them. Um, you know, I try to buy, I'll buy carbide. That's about all I try to buy is uh, if I can find that reasonable. Wow, more in mills. More in mills, KC cutters. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are specialty. Uh, radius, ball in mills. Uh, you know, I have them all in order. Like these are. Uh, 600 to 749. These are regrounds. You know, people are like, why do you want regrounds? I use them all the time. If you yeah. want an undersized hole or something, yeah. I'm constantly pawing through undersized end mills. I like a special the, size. Yeah, I like the way you've got those organized. I have mine are all just in a drawer. They're all in, you know, little containers. Yeah. But uh, I was struggling. Yeah, that's I, I can. Yeah, get some of those trays and put the range yeah. in there. Um, I can't think of who makes these trays right off the top of my head. But, yeah, I've uh, seen them before. I know who, uh, yeah. Um, I've actually just been 3D printing my own. Yeah, they, they don't give them away. <laughs> they, they, once you start buying, you say, oh, these are cheap. But by the time you make up an order, you're like, whew. Yeah. And, uh, but the nice thing is, on their website, they have a drawer, uh, what do they call it? Oh, like a layout tool? A layout thing. You can drag the drawers in there. You put in so your you drawer dimensions. Yeah. yeah, cool. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I've used that quite a bit. Oh, more boxed stuff. This is... Uh, Boy, that's a nice box. Oh. Gauge block set. Ah, gauge box, yeah. Um, this is another gauge block set. This is... Uh-huh. 10, 10 and a half, 10, 20, 30, 40 by 10s. This is a depth of a depth mic. This is a ah, inside, inside uh, mic. mic. Yep. Tubular, tubular inside mics. This you like. People like this. South Bend Leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, level. South Bend Level. Wow. Probably came with a lathe or something. Yeah. Very nice. I just like the original box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are uh, dial bar gauges. This is uh, three quarters of an inch and a half. Okay. That one's two to six. Thread repair stuff, yep. taps and dies. Uh, these are pretty neat. These are. Uh, They're spring loaded. No, that one's not. Oh. Huh. If you have a bolt that's damaged on the end, yeah. you put this on in the, in the, you know, further down and then thread it off. Huh. 
Never seen that before. Yeah, that one is our stock. Yeah. Yeah, Quarter to half, fine and coarse. I do quite a bit of thread repair. These are easy outs. Uh huh. Lumber and letter stamps, thread files. These are uh, tap extractors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever got one to work, but <laughs> you know what? Surprisingly, I have if once. You, maybe yeah. if you drop it on the floor by breaking it, <laughs> but if you break a tap off doing this, I've never seen them come out. Yeah. <laughs> I think what happened when I broke my tap is I got a little bit too much side load on oh, it or something, yeah. and yeah. If you did that, maybe broke it off, but if you break them turning them in... Right, yeah. They're not coming out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask, you know, with all the thread repair and everything, I'm surprised you don't have a, uh, a tap uh, EDM machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is all... Uh, this is an age. Call it stop. These are all mics. Uh-huh. Three to ten inch, all uh, Mitchell Toyo. Um, yep, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is some lathe of, dogs. This is carriage a set stop. Of, uh, Brown and short. Oh, V blocks. V blocks set. with the we they call them V blocks. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for uh, yeah. Small stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually, I actually have one right here. I'm using to hold this like this mm -hmm. length is very uh close so i have to surface grind it but uh cool yeah that's uh one of the things i, I keep thinking about picking up when i see them on, on not something uh, to use every Facebook day but they're very handy to have yeah yeah um, like i said this is the block that's the Got a couple centers there, lead dogs. I just bought these from this edge. I was a little bit uh, depressed when I got it because it says manufactured in China. Uh, I said, Well, I want to buy uh, something from an American company. Mm. <laughs> I guess they're an American company selling Chinese stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard I'm, to avoid today. It is. It is. But, uh, this is some more. These are my go-to indicators I use all the time. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one of those. Boring and facing heads. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Inco. I don't remember who made them exactly. They're made in France. Mm. Yeah, very nice uh, looking though. If you look uh, for them on eBay, you're going to pay up for them. Okay. You can find them. Yeah. Looks like the one next to it there is a Criterion. That's a Criterion. Yep. This is a Criterion. Yep. Yeah, they've got that distinctive look. This is, this is the one I use the most. That's a Criterion hmm. half inch. I use that a lot. Yeah, I, I, they're the only ones I'll buy. I, and I don't need any more. I guess I have plenty. I have three different sizes. Yeah. Um, and 5C collets? 5C collets, uh, centers, Albrecht trucks I got. Yeah. Hex square. Five C's, uh, gear cutters. Do you do, uh, well, you, you made that tapered gear. Do you do, do you do much in the way of gear making or? Oh, uh, I do. Yeah. yeah. I can show you some of the stuff. I yeah. Made. Yeah. One of these days I want to try that. I took a class, uh, on gear making at the summer bash and, uh, it was, uh, very enlightening. But uh, the hard part's identifying the gear. <laughs> if somebody brings you a gear to make, like identifying the, t the uh, pitch angles and uh, yeah. uh, all the, you know, the, which cutter you need, because there's like for every gear cutter, there's like what 17 different sizes or something <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, I got a, a hard inch 5C collar. Speed check, check, yeah. That thing's really nice. I got a face plate for the lathe, a big four jaw, smaller four jaw, set of Morse taper number three bits. Um, cool. This is my LeBlond 15 by 30 uh, hydraulic shift. I, lo I love these lathes. They are so user friendly, easy to operate, quick. Like you can you can operate this thing like so quickly. It's like. Everything's right where it should be, and there's like, 
I know a lot of people don't like the hydraulic shifts because if they do go down, that's an issue. Hmm. But if they don't, they're really quick, they're easy to shift. Uh, um, I wish it went a little bit slower. Uh, I think it only goes down to 45. I wish it went about half of that for like, I power tap a lot of stuff. Like for bigger taps, it's kind of quick. So how long have you had this? I've had this for about seven years. Okay. When I first decided I was going to do this, like I said, I had an old car I sold. I said, I'm going to buy a lathe in a mill. How hard can that be? Well, it's extremely hard to buy a lathe. One that's not beat to death. Hmm. They're all beat to death. And the ones that aren't beat to death sell like that. And from what I've heard, most of them get bought up and, and shipped overseas. Hmm. So I bought this from a... 80 year old toolmaker, 80 some year old guy over in uh, Connecticut, and it was killing him. To, he, he, his knees were giving out, he just couldn't do it, it was killing him to give it up. But uh, it's been well taken care of. Yeah. Uh, it came with this uh, buck, a just true chuck. It nice. came with some of the tool holders. You know, so, what came, size is that chuck? Is that a 10 or that's 12? A, that's a 10 inch. 10, okay, yep. That's the chuck I usually use most of the time. Yeah, and that's why you need that hydraulic table. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a, an 8 inch and that's heavy enough. Yeah, that, that's very heavy. Um, but I have a steady rest for it. I have this huge uh, 20 in Jacobs wow. ball bearing chuck. I don't know if you ever saw one of those. Yeah, I haven't seen one that big, but um, I actually... Uh, one inch capacity. Wow. Yeah, I actually switched over. I bought two uh, Jacobs Super Ball Bearing uh, Chucks, and I, and I love them. They're, yeah, this uh, one here is a ball bearing. It's re they're real nice. Yeah. They're top of the line. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit of money, but man, they're they're nice. They're, they're smooth. They hold better. They do everything yeah. better. Exactly. What size uh, is that? A, a BXA? BXA. Tool okay. Yep, that's what I've got on mine. Yeah. For mine, it's it's right at the limit. I have to have my tools all the way down. Oh. Um, but, uh, but I think it's, it's better to do that than, you know, go smaller with the AXA. Yeah. I have quite a collection. I keep telling myself I don't need any more, but I'll go on eBay and find one for 40 or 50 bucks and say, I gotta buy it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I see but you got the, uh, what's it? Oh, bar yeah. Nice big boring bars. I have an inch and a quarter. I use this a lot. Um, hmm. that adapter I showed you. They had to bore that big hole out. Just mm -hmm. quick work of that. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a little bit, a uh, little bit much for my lathe. And I really like this style bit that they that, uh, insert. They work really good. Uh, yep, some center. This is a, cold so. this is a yep. uh, knurling tool. tool. Yep. I've done quite a bit of knurling. I just bought these not long ago. Straight knurls. Mm -hmm. Good job. I have this. I hardly ever use it, but I have used it a couple times. It's nice because if you have to drill a hole to a certain depth, you can use the DRL. Yeah. Um, other than that, I, I never trust it for being set up on center. <laughs> mm. And then once you take it off, I, I don't know, I just hardly ever use it. Okay. Yeah, I've been thinking about getting one of those, but I, uh, I put a DRO on my tailstock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I tried that with uh, I don't know, somebody on YouTube had one of these things. And mm, yep. Put that, and I, that's why I put this on here, and then I would put this long travel indicator on there. Okay, but, yep. But that's, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just bought a couple. These are Dorian. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see how big the, the holder yeah. is. Yeah. These Dorians are just as good as the Aloris, hmm. uh, made in the USA. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of mine are Chinese. Yeah, I, uh, I have some uh, like external threading tools, bits. Use yep. That. Uh, internal threading. This is a uh, solid rock machine shop boring bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve, Steve Barton. Steve Lang. Barton. Steve Barton. Oh, Solid Rock. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve Lang is uh, Shark River. He was making these and selling them. Yeah. This thing is so nice. I, mm. I can't recommend this thing enough. Okay. Uh, this is my, if I need a barn bar, 
for a three quarter inch hole bigger, this is the one I use. Okay. okay. Yeah. The insert lasts forever. I don't know what it is about the way he designed it. Hmm. It's a great little boring bar. I always wished he made a three quarter inch. Yeah. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff on uh, surface, surface grinders. grinders. Yeah. yeah. I have all kinds of little boring bars, special tools I've ground up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a nice, I just bought this not long ago. This is a Dorian. Uh, wow, Dorian. that's a nice thin. Yeah, I think it works good. Yeah. Works real good. What brand's the uh, the cutoff tool? Dorian. Oh, the whole thing's yeah. Dorian. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, because I've been wanting a parting blade that's thinner. This is really nice. Uh, I think it's 90,000 something. Yeah, 90. Cool. Yeah, I see you've got a DRO on the lathe as well. Did you add that? I or? added that. That's a DRO Pro's version. Oh, uh, yeah. With the magnetic tapes. Um, I put mine, I kind of stole this idea off the internet. Somebody did the same thing. But, uh, it's mounted to the taper attachment. It's not mounted in here. Oh, okay. The, the magnetic strip is right here, and the reader is back here. Yep. So the magnetic strip moves with this, and I guess it's just a protective cover I put on there. But, nice. Uh, it's out of the way. It's, uh, like I said, you're not ramming your tailstock into it. You don't lose any tailstock clearance. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it would work on any other brand lathe, but it works on this LeBlanc. Um, nice. And where's the, uh, oh, the one for the... Uh, Z-axis is on the back, the I back. assume. It's yeah. Here. yeah, yeah. I, I added that. I I never used that. Where I worked, I didn't have any DRO stuff. And my son kept saying, you need to get DRO, you need to get DRO. I'm like, I don't need a DRO. And then I got a couple jobs that were like multiple pieces. I'm like, I need a DRO. <laughs> so yeah. I, got, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even imagine not having a DRO anymore. Yeah. I but... never... I use this for threading, and that's it. Yeah. Um, even this I use for threading. I, I, I can't use that for threading. I just don't trust myself. Hmm. It's not, I'm not quick enough for something. But uh, I'll use this. Actually, this, this thing is up here. If I'm threading something, I want to see that needle. And if I want to, you know, if I want to stop it at zero or around there, mm -hmm. I, I want to see this. I don't want to, that goes too fast. Mm. So I use that for threading. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, like I told my buddy Joe, if uh, if the lathe I bought from him didn't have a DRO, I probably would have given up. Yeah. <clears throat> but I see yeah. you've got uh, one of my favorite little cheap uh, hacks back there, the uh, the Michaels children's paint cups oh yeah 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 for oils and yeah that. yep i use those too they're uh this i use to set tool heights ah <clears throat> okay yep yeah i um in fact uh it's probably out now about an hour ago i uh, released a video of a tool height setter that I made oh. that uses a, an arm with a flag. I mm -hmm. uh, got the idea from Nell's Mechanical Man Cave. Oh. So I don't have to like squint down there. Is it touching yet? Or Yeah. So. It just, I mean, it gets me close. I, I've done this for 40 years, so I don't really don't even need <laughs> it, to be honest with you. But it is yep. handy to have once in a while for a boring bar or something. I, I still hardly ever use it. But, uh, Very nice. So um, more more chucks and stuff over yep. here. Over here I have uh, it's a Troiki 12 inch uh, turntable. That's probably the heaviest thing I own. <laughs> I would guess, yeah. <laughs> besides from the mill and the lathe itself. This is this is no lightweight either. This is a, a Bison super spacer. Oh, uh, okay. This is a uh, just an eight-inch chuck I use on here occasionally. It's a direct mount, LO mount. This is the one I just ground the jaws in not long ago. Uh, this is one of those collet chucks. Five C collet. Five C yeah. collet chucks. I bought this to put on. I did a job, but this is my uh, indexing head for mm -hmm. gear cutting, and I made these gears. And 
I needed something that was pretty accurate, so I bought this and I mounted this on here. Mm. The chucks, they, th these are Chinese indexing heads that everybody sells. Uh, what do they call it? BS1, BS2. Yep. They're a nice indexing head, but the chucks leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> okay. And every time I used it, it was out four thousands, five thousands. And when you're cutting a gear, you want it right on. Yeah. So I bought this chuck, and this is kind of like a... I use this chuck on here. I use it with those piston jaws I made. They fit on here. I use it in the milling machine. But I made this uh, adapter plate. I call it a poor man's adjust true. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I got yeah. four set screws in it. Mm -hmm. So I can dial this chuck in exactly nice. on the mill. But as a setup, I can put this on here too. Uh huh. So is that a uh, what they call a universal? Yeah, head? universal. So it's got. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, from what I understand, the way th those work is you actually you have a drive from the back on the universal ones where it. Oh, uh, that's for cutting like for spiral. yeah for for spiral yeah, yeah right. helix. That's something I would never do. So okay, I, I was uh, just curious. I, I uh, yeah, this doesn't have that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, those seem pretty rare, but you know it's. It's I haven't... something you would never do. So okay. I mean, something I would never do would have never done. So. All right. So don't waste my time I looking waste for. Money on okay. That. I would just concentrate on this if you wanted to practice some gear cutting or. Um, yep. You know, it's all in a setup. <laughs> These are some gears I've made. These are the uh, metric change gears for the blonde lathes. Okay. I've made multiple sets of these and sold them. Yeah, you know, here it tells you like for the pitch, what gear to use. And yeah. Like most of the blonde lays are missing these, like mine was. So I was going to buy a set, and they were outrageously expensive. Hmm. So I says, well, I'm going to try to make them. So I got all the information on them, pitch angles, uh, uh, you know, the bore, the key, everything. And yeah. I made some up and. I said, well, I could probably sell some of these, and I have sold quite a few. Yeah. So this has a quick change gearbox, but you can switch out the gears? Only for metric. Oh, only for metric. For okay. cutting metric threads. That's the only reason you would change a gear. Well, right, right. But I mean, but so but you can do imperial and metric. Yeah. On. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. with the, okay. It's an inch metric lathe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's one of the things. My, my lathe, I have a quick change gearbox, but it's only imperial. Yeah. I just made four sets of those. And I, while I was making them, I made two extras. The, with these two gears, you can cut 90% of the metric thread you're ever going to cut. You really don't need all four. You're never going to use them. So I was going to see if there was any interest in just the two gears. Well, I guess if there's any interest, people can reach out to me and I can this is some forward other, it on to you. This is some other stuff I've made. I made this for a guy for a tractor. I made two of them. I need um, these. I'm not sure what they were, but there's a lot of work in them. I had to make the the male thread first to cut the female thread. Otherwise, you have no idea how deep to go. Right? Um, this is the one of those throttle shafts I was talking about. Oh yeah, that long shaft had four of these on it, mm -hmm. but that's the slot. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but yep. they're cut from both sides. Mm -hmm. Some other stuff. Need any helix oh, oils? Oh, helix oils. <laughs> the problem is, I usually have every size until somebody brings me something. <laughs> yep. Every size but that. This is just some oh, yeah, a bunch of setup blocks. Some, yeah. This block here is uh, pretty handy. This is the same height as the vice, the bed on the vice. So if I need to put something long in, uh, it's the exact same. I made it the exact same height as the. That's a good idea. Vice. Yeah. So you don't have to have get out a machinist right, jack every right. time. You just use that, and it's already yeah. the exact height. Yeah, unless it's up on parallels and then you're yeah, set. Right. Yeah. Some large tap pipe taps, uh, radius cutters. Yep. Uh, I made most of these. These are for slitting saws and that kind of stuff. Knurls. Mm -hmm. 
I never used this. I just bought it not long ago at a flea market. It's like a single oh, roller yeah. knurling tools. They, hmm. Somebody was telling me they're for like smaller, low horsepower machines or something. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I've seen those used with uh, where you do straight knurls. Yeah, I have one. It's like a really fine one, but but uh, but yeah, I've never seen it with. It's with a bunch of stuff like that. That uh, that seems kind of counterintuitive because you know yeah. that it's smaller and you're putting a lot more side load on it. And yeah, it cuts them both at the same time, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Drill bits. That's a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah, I'd that'd be a little overpowering for my, uh, my I machine. Used, I used that to drill out that piece of stainless steel. Mm. Reamers. Same thing with reamers. You got a million reamers until you need one, and you don't have the one you need. But this is that. I just bought this one for a job the other day. You we were talking about how close the tolerances were. Mm. And this is a 261. The tolerance was 262 plus or minus one, so I bought a 261. And it's still cut over. And uh, I was watching some YouTube video. The guy was very knowledgeable. I don't remember who it was. But he took a diamond stone to the edge. Mm. And it fixed it. It brought yeah. it down to, like, he showed how to, like, fine-tune it. Mm. Like, to get it smaller. And if you want it bigger, he took a, he took a piece of uh, high-speed steel and, like, raised the burr back up. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So even after 44 years of this, you're still learning every day. <laughs> well, you know, that's why I started this hobby, is I wanted to learn, and I figure I've got a lifetime of learning in front of me now. Yeah. Boring bars. I'm a boring bar junkie. <laughs> but I use them a lot, so... And tool bits. Tools, yeah. I don't really use this much, that much stuff anymore. I use mostly inserts. Mm -hmm. These I use a lot. These, these. Um, I got my Jimmy DiResta poster there. <laughs> yeah, he's not too far from us. No, no. Have you ever been to a shop? I haven't, but uh, I know a guy that was. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there. and then I guess what we got left is your uh, your workbench. Yeah, I just made this uh, not long ago. This is a. Uh, oh yeah, you sent me a picture a of that. Ball that I made. Yeah. It does concave and convex radiuses. This plate I made, but this part here was part of a uh, a wheel rate, uh, wheel dresser for a surface grinder. Ah. So I made this and this, all this, mm -hmm. and made the dovetail so it can go in and out. And then you use the same setup as you would on the surface grinder. It's exactly three inches from here to the center. So if you are cutting a half inch radius uh, ball or convex, you set this on the surface plate and you can use a gauge block stack up to set this tool height to get the exact radius um, <clears throat> and to turn it around to like do a ball. But I cut this ball on there <laughs> was my first. Very cool. My first job I did with it. Um, now I've had this radius dresser forever and I was gonna, uh, dress a wheel to do a form tool, and I was thinking, if I can dress the wheel, why can't I use this to cut something in a leaf? Yeah. So I mount it to the plate, I take the compound off, mount this on there, and uh, I mean, feel how smooth that is. That's, uh, it's, uh, oh yeah, wow. Very smooth. It yeah. got a really nice finish. Um, cool. Oh wow! Is that stainless? No, that's ten ten eighteen. Wow! <laughs> I know. I was shocked, but uh, it works really, really good. I'm yeah, really very good. nice. And oh yeah, centerless a, grinder. Uh, centerless pin grinder, it's yeah. called. This is a, a job I was working on grinding these. Point one eight seven plus or minus one they needed. Um, when I tried doing it by just holding on to the material, there was too much waste. So I made this up. The only problem is they need to fit in there like that. Mm. <laughs> um, so it just relies on friction to hold it? Yeah. No, I'm going to put a set screw in it. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Oh, okay. Um, I tried it with just holding on to 
to do it on this part. And it worked good. It was within a couple tenths. Hmm. Um, but that thing, as you turn that, I don't know if you can see it, it self-feeds out. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that, yeah. I see it. So you can put the wheel here, mm -hmm. and you can feed that right under the surface grinder wheel. Yeah. Huh. And then feed it back out. Yeah. So you could also set that up for tapers then too, and self feed. Uh, it. you'd have to. Tip yeah, yeah, right. You'd have to put it on a on a sign plate or something. But yeah. But yeah, it's just held in there with. Uh, then you can just change it out, and yeah, once it's set up, it's. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, but yeah, this is my workbench. This yeah. is the job I'm working on now. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Well, that that's is uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's quite extensive. It's uh, and like I said, uh, you know, so so well organized that uh, I don't think uh, you know my buddy Joe is organized, but uh, I think you beat him too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I wouldn't say I have a disease, but uh, <laughs> hey, I, just I like being I, 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 I look at it as there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And uh, and messy is wrong. So no, uh, I just uh, like I said, I've done this my whole life. I uh, when I retired, I was like, be, once you're cut off from this, it's just like you're missing something, and it's it's a profession that you learn to love. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I love going to work every single day and making something, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's. Uh, it's a profession you learn to love, and uh, I just want to keep doing it. Yeah. People, my wife doesn't understand it, but uh, people don't understand. M most people don't, <laughs> but you know what? I, if you do, you do. You get it, you get it. It's, uh, yeah, I just like making things. And when you have this kind of equipment and this kind of stuff, you can literally make anything. Pretty much. I, I haven't gotten much. When I bought the lathe, I wanted a bigger one. And uh, I haven't had a single job yet that I had to turn down because it wouldn't fit in there. Hmm. Um, so uh, that hasn't been an issue. Yeah. If you don't have the tools to do the job, you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> At this yeah. point, I'm, I'm pretty much strapped for space, and what I have is it. And I'm really not wanting for much more. Of course, there's always little things I want, but... Uh, yeah, I'd say you got a pretty well-equipped shop. All right. Well, thank you, Russ. Okay, it was a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, if uh, anybody is interested in the gears, get a hold of me, and I'll uh, pass the info along to Russ. If any question on any of the tooling or stuff I have, and I want to know where to get something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, when uh, I'll get the info from you on some of these things, and we can put links in the in the description for, like, the uh, the... the the bandsaw and the you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, the lights, those CB. Yep, the lights and the can't wheels. Recommend them enough. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, thanks, and okay. uh, take care, everybody. Thank you.